The iconic to the up and coming. Design is the heart of our business. Copenhagen, Phoenix Scottsdale, Tempe. On We'll Meet Again, after the rise of the civil rights movement. You haven't seen Thelma in 53 years. She was creating freedom schools. A search to reunite people who changed each other's lives. I want to find Lefty. He made a difference in me. Tonight at 7 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS. A community service of Arizona State University. The easiest and best way to support Arizona PBS is by becoming a sustaining member. Your monthly contribution of $5 or more comes directly from your bank account or credit card, so you know your membership is always current. It also means no more renewal notices in your mailbox. So more of your dollars go to the programs you love. It's convenient for you, greener for us, and better for the planet. Become a sustaining member today. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Your favorite PBS shows, ready to watch when you are, anytime, any place. Find more ways to explore than ever before. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Hospice of the Valley, medical, social, and spiritual care for patients nearing end of life and support for their families. A not-for-profit community hospice, hob.org. Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix. This is Cronkite News. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi is in Arizona talking taxes. Why she says the Trump administration is making things worse for working families. Plus a heartfelt message from a grieving family in hopes of helping teachers spot the warning signs of teen suicide. And how one program is opening up opportunities to stay healthy and active for Arizona's visually impaired. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Noelle Lilly. And I'm Tyler Paley. Thanks for joining us. Minority leader Nancy Pelosi stopped in Phoenix today as part of a nationwide tour against President Donald Trump's recent tax reform. Reporter Sidney Eisenberg was at the town hall. Today's event was part of the Not One Penny More Tour, featuring elected officials and people affected by the new tax law. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi was joined today by Representative Raul Grijalva. This isn't about Democrats or Republicans. This is about the United States of America, about our children's future. Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi and Arizona Representative Raul Grijalva are calling on Arizonans and Republicans to change by taking a closer look at the effects of President Donald Trump's tax reform. The town hall is part of a nationwide tour that will also be making a stop in Tucson. Despite the fact that there are parts of our economy that are doing well, many people in Arizona are hurting. Minority Leader Pelosi says it shouldn't matter that Arizona is a red state whenever it comes to looking at the effects of the Trump tax bill. According to the bill, income tax rates and corporate tax rates saw a cut. But opponents say this will harm the low and middle class families while providing more funds to the rich. According to the Tax Policy Center, a nonpartisan think tank, they estimate 86 million middle income families will pay more in taxes. Leader Pelosi was not free from criticism at the event. But most people have to. 
Representative Raul Grijalva says that Arizona's Republican past is not the focus of the call for reform. Those are net losses on an individual and family basis, and uh, I think we're, the awareness of people to know that uh, I think is the most important thing right now. According to the Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy, the top 1% of taxpayers here in Arizona will receive 29% of the tax cuts. Now on the opposite end, the poorest 60% will receive 13% of those tax cuts. In the Media Center, Sydney Eisenberg, Cronkite News. A week from today, 22 candidates will face off in a special primary election for the 8th congressional seat uh, in the 8th Congressional District, left open with the sudden December resignation of former Arizona Congressman Trent Franks. Cronkite News reporter Shelby Lindsay sets the stage for us from our Washington Bureau. New campaign finance reports filed with the Federal Election Commission show a surprising leader in a heavily Republican district based in Glendale, Arizona. Democrat Haral Tipernini raised more than $306,000 and still has $109,000 on hand, according to the FEC. That's more than Republican frontrunners Phil Lovis with $270,000, Steve Montenegro, who raised $232,000, and Debbie Lesko, who reported raising $197,000. But political experts say Tipernini's lead is not likely to last. A Democrat um, has zero chance. Less than zero was a movie once upon a time. And a Democrat winning this seat is, is even less than less than zero. George Califf, president at Data Orbital, said the GOP primary is the one to watch. Senator Lesko uh, is in a great position, but then... Um, but then Montenegro, you know, continues to put out good endorsements, continues to pound the pavement, and quite frankly, was the was the highest fundraiser uh, this year for the filings. Experts anticipate higher than normal voter turnout based on the number of early voting ballots, but are looking to see how many voters show up and vote the day of. In Washington, Shelby Lindsay, Cronkite News. For more details on next week's special primary, Cronkite News has a full multimedia report on the District 8 race. Check it out at cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Arizona Senator Jeff Flake says he'll introduce a bill extending DACA protect protections for three years next week. Along with the extended protection, the bill will give $7.6 billion to fully fund the first three years of the administration's border security proposal. In an op-ed piece for the Washington Post, Flake wrote, quote, I'll be the first to admit this three-for-three three approach is far from a perfect solution, but it would provide a temporary fix by, the begin by beginning the process of improving border security and ensuring DACA recipients will not face potential deportation, end quote. DACA protections will begin to expire on March 5th. A group of students who survived the Florida school shooting have begun their 400-mile trip to Tallahassee. They plan to hold a rally tomorrow at the Capitol in hopes to meet with state lawmakers to find a way to keep schools safe. This is not going to happen again, not at my school, not at any school. I don't want anyone to feel how I feel or how any of my fellow classmates and schoolmates feel. Three buses are taking about 100 Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School students to pressure lawmakers to pass more restrictive gun laws. And some Parkland residents will be at the White House tomorrow to discuss ways to make schools safer. Tomorrow we will be hosting parents, teachers, and students here at the White House to discuss efforts to ensure safety at our schools. Members of the Parkland community will be attending this listening session, as will individuals who were impacted by past school shootings. Late today, President Trump directed the Justice Department to ban gun modifications like bump stocks, which were used in the Las Vegas massacre. Lawmakers in Florida introduced a plan to have armed officers at schools statewide, but voted down an attempt for a state, ban to, a state bill to ban assault rifles. Teen suicide is a growing epidemic that is plaguing schools across the state. Cronkite News reporter Madison Stark takes a look at how the legacy of One Valley Teen is inspiring advocates to make a change in the Arizona legislature. In just this 2017-2018 school year alone, 18 kids have died from suicide here in the Valley. I spoke with one family who's been instrumental in working to get a bill introduced to help schools improve training to spot students in trouble. 
He just was a top-notch kid and top-notch person. Tim Warnock speaks about his son, Mitch, who passed away after death by suicide in October 2016. Mitch was a student at Corona del Sol High School in Tempe and was a championship pole vault athlete. Incredibly hard worker, um, very dedicated to being the best that, that he could be, um, extremely competitive, very independent, fiercely independent. And uh, that's probably part of what got him into a little bit of trouble. Mitch's death is a part of an alarming increase in teen suicide throughout the state. According to a report by Arizona Child Fatality Review Program, Arizona has seen an 81% increase in child suicide rates since 2009. This problem, Warnock says, can be partly attributed to the lack of care schools show to kids in need of emotional help. As parents and as teachers who see what the vast majority of teachers are doing, and how much they care and how much they're going above and beyond. We just took for granted that there could be school environments that were heartless. In January, SB 1391, more commonly known as the Mitch Warnock Act, was proposed. This bill would require school employees in all Arizona school districts and charter schools to receive training to spot the signs of suicidal behavior. Katie McPherson is an executive director at the Gerian Institute for Educational Consulting, who believes suicide prevention training is essential. Things have changed. Kids are coming to school with some trauma, with some neglect, with some pretty heavy issues. And so part of being a teacher is sustaining and building that relationship. Opposition for the bill includes questions about funding and overloading teachers with too much responsibility. However, State Representative Mitzi Epstein, supporter of Mitch's bill, feels such pushback is insignificant when it comes to saving lives. I live across the street from a high school and that high school has these stories happen far too often and I am hurting from it and my whole community is hurting from it and when we can stop the hurt let's do that let's stop the hurt let's save lives. I would have traded everything everything to have him take that next breath and I don't want another parent to have to endure that or another set of high school friends to have to endure that or their teachers. The Mitch Warnock Act has been assigned to committee but has not yet had a hearing. In Phoenix, Madison Stark, Cronkite News. From yoga to Tai Chi, a Valley organization wants to make health and wellness accessible for all. Coming up on Cronkite News, we take a look at the inclusive exercise programs aimed to get those with physical disabilities feeling better on the inside and outside. Plus, Mill Avenue is soon to be the home for scores of, that's right, senior citizens. The plans for a new senior living high rise that will change Tempe's skyline. I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. The journalists of tomorrow face a fast-changing media landscape, but quality news remains vitally important to our communities, our country, and our world. At ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication, students learn solid, reliable reporting, holding the powerful accountable, and rebuilding the public's trust. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. As journalists at Cronkite News, we report on stories that matter to you by focusing on the local impact. We dig deeper and work tirelessly to keep you informed. Live in Wickerburg. Live in Los Angeles. In Cleveland. In Washington. In Louisville. From Jerusalem. Live in Philadelphia. From around the world to right here in Phoenix. At Cronkite News, we report the facts and stick to the truth.
The Arizona House is considering a proposal to allow needle exchange programs for illicit drug users to be operated legally in the state. This legislation is part of an effort to cut opioid addiction and diseases which spread from dirty needles. It's expected to be debated on the House floor this week. The Southern Arizona Association for the Visually Impaired, also known as SAFI, holds exercise classes and private trainings weekly. Their mission is to make the visually impaired community feel comfortable working out while getting them up and moving. Amanda Slee shows us how this is made possible. Going through blind rehabilitation, you know, the better you feel, both physically and mentally, the better you're going to do. Mike Armstrong, the health and wellness instructor for Savvy in Phoenix, is blind himself. He builds trust with his clients by exposing them to the equipment and explaining what other students have done. I think that part of that is the fear of moving around. Like you get to where you're really um, docile and you just mm -hmm. sit around. Here at Savvy, they have health and wellness programs from yoga, tai chi, and self-defense to help the visually impaired get up and moving their bodies as the rates of obesity are higher in this community. In group classes like yoga, the instructor has to teach in a completely different way. So go on your forearms and your knees. Okay, this is And then move your knees as far apart as you can since participants can't see the example. It takes a lot more audible description, sometimes <clears throat> some tactile help. You know, feeling my body position as I'm doing something or adjusting someone's shoulders or foot, whatever the case might be. Another issue at gyms is knowing where the equipment is placed. The Ability 360 Sports and Fitness Center takes issues like this into consideration. 90% of the time at the same place, it's not as many people as in all the other gyms and um, I mean people know about disabilities here. No matter the physical disability, Armstrong says all benefit mentally from exercise. It lifts their spirits up and kind of shifts their mindset from a place that they can't do something to knowing that it is possible because they're seeing it from all the other students and staff. In Phoenix, Amanda Slee, Cronkite News. Stay tuned as next week Amanda will attend Savvy's third annual Culture Day where people will explore blindness through different cultural perspectives. The groundbreaking is tomorrow for a new senior living community developed by Arizona State University. The 20-story building called Mirabella at ASU will be located on the southeast corner of Mill and University Drive, right in the heart of Sun Devil Country. The concept is to engage retirees by providing easy access to learning opportunities, health services, and athletic activities. There are almost 100 similar university-based retirement communities across the nation. WalletHub released a new report today of the top 20 best state capital cities to live in. Austin, Texas is ranked number one on the list, followed by Madison, Wisconsin, Boise, Idaho, Lincoln, Nebraska, and Bismarck, North Dakota. And where was Phoenix ranked? Out of that top 20, Phoenix ranked last. The personal finance website ranked cities based on their cost of living, K through 12 education quality, economic strength, and number of attractions. Out of all 50 state capitals, Phoenix also had the lowest number of state, local, and government employees, ranking 48th on the list. Phoenix Mesa Gateway Airport says it's the first in the southwest to install a fully automated exit lane, replacing guards with a technology-based checkpoint. Airport officials say the new system is called the Exit Lane Bridge Control. They say replacing guards with technology not only el eliminates the possibility of human error, but also offers more control, as well as a cost saving. Gateway Airport served nearly 1.4 million passengers last year. Meanwhile, if you're looking to make your Valley commute a little punnier, ADOT wants you to enter its latest safety message contest. From now until February 26th, you can submit your own message to help drivers get serious about driving safely. ADOT displays quirky traffic safety messages to try to put a stop to speeding, drunk driving, and other dangers on the road. People submitted nearly 7,000 entries in last year's safety sign contest. You can submit your message at azdot.gov slash sign contest. The public will be able to vote for 15 finalists selected by ADOT. The 28th Annual Chinese Culture and Cuisine Festival not only brought great food and fun to Phoenix this weekend. Coming up on Cronkite News, how this year's festival inspired a younger generation to embrace their roots. 
and how much longer until we're back in the 70s? I'll tell you coming up. I'm Ted Simons, host and managing editor of Arizona Horizon. Join us each weekday at 5.30 and 10 as we bring you the top newsmakers who impact the state. We cover the stories in depth that shape and affect our local communities, and we take the time to ensure that all voices are equally heard. For more than 30 years, Arizona Horizon has been your voice and your source for what matters most, right here on Arizona PBS. By the year 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Before Professor Halden, I had an insane amount of passion, but I almost felt helpless because I didn't know how to use it. Professor Halden gave me a chance to make a difference. Being at a place like ASU allows you to take these big leaps. Ultimately, the biggest problems in the world cannot be solved alone. It's the year of the dog, according to the Chinese calendar. And those at last weekend's 28th annual Chinese Culture and Cuisine Festival in Phoenix celebrated with traditional Chinese dance, food, and artwork. Cronkite News reporter Alexis Burdine spoke with festival goers about the importance of passing down tradition. The Chow family wanted to make sure they didn't miss this year's Chinese festival in Phoenix because more than just a fun outing, it was an opportunity to celebrate their heritage and culture. We wanted to make sure our children kind of understood about what the, the whole celebration was about and get them to understand their roots. The art and the different foods that were available here and then the uh, martial arts exhibition. According to the Center for American Progress, Arizona's Asian population is up nearly 122 percent since the year 2000, making the state the second largest in the U.S. for Asian population growth. The type of work environment that we have here and, and how pro-business they are, I think that that's uh, something that's quite attractive. And as the number of residents of Asian descent in Arizona continues to grow, those in the community say events like the Chinese Cultural and Cuisine Festival are necessary in exposing younger generations to their roots. There's a lot of uh, young Asian uh, children, and this is a way for them to know who they are and where they're from. <laughs> And one of the most tasty, the food, a staple in traditional Chinese cuisine. A batch of delicious steamed buns tastes like home. Everybody here, they have the traditional, the real Chinese food, where you really don't find it in the uh, restaurants. The mo most of the Chinese restaurants are Americanized. Nothing Americanized about these traditional bamboo rice steamers, offering nothing but authentic taste. In Phoenix, Alexis Burdine, Cronkite News. Currently, Nevada is the only state ahead of Arizona for Asian population growth. So it's supposed to be the time of the year for lots of outdoor festivals across the valley. You could have fooled me. Our temperatures aren't quite playing along today. Courtney Malley is in the Weather Center tracking our chilly forecast. Thanks, Tyler. This is the current temperature we are feeling right now in Phoenix. It is 57 degrees with mostly sunny skies and some calm winds, which is a little bit more on the chilly side. As for our as for our temperatures across the nation, if we take a look here at the East Coast, things are a bit warmer than those winter temperatures that they are used to experiencing. The high that we are feeling right now is 66 degrees in New York, 75 in Pittsburgh, 75 in Memphis, and 79 in New Orleans. However, if we take a look at the West Coast, especially for the Pacific Northwest, they are feeling some really, really chilly winter temperatures. That is why, th with that weather, that cool air is going to be coming our way for the next week, so that is why our temperatures are going to be staying in the 50s. As for precipitation, we're going to stay clear here in Arizona, but that rain we were feeling last week is being pushed to the east. That is why those temperatures are rising on the coast. Now let's take a look at our high temperatures tomorrow for Arizona. It's going to be more of the same. We're going to be in the mid 50s through the through the end of the week. For Cronkite weather, I'm Courtney Malley. After a string of hosting championship sporting events, Arizona is taking a hiatus. That's right. Coming up on Cronkite News, stadiums being built in Los Angeles and Las Vegas could be competition when major sporting events choose a stadium.
Cronkite News weeknights at 5 on Arizona PBS. Fridays, it's at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Then join us for at Cronkite News, our weekly refresh, each Friday at 5 on Arizona PBS. Arizona is on a bit of a championship hosting hiatus after an unprecedented three-year run. Josiah Destin went to Avondale to find out what could prompt a return of these events. Valley sports and business leaders gathered at ISM Raceway earlier this month, eyeing a return of championship sporting events to the desert. We did a survey last year after all four of those major events that we had, and it was astounding. It was 90-some percent of are residents who wanted to have these events back. Arizona was home to the 2015 Super Bowl and Pro Bowl, 2016 College Football Playoff National Championship game, and the 2017 Men's Basketball Final Four. The earliest those events could return is 2023. The Super Bowl and Final Four are committed through 2022, and the next available college football championship game is in 2025. But the Fiesta Bowl stages a big-time college football event at the end of every season, giving the Valley a chance to provide an annual reminder of how it can shine in the national spotlight. Hospitality is extremely important to teams. We continue to demonstrate that through the Fiesta Bowl and Cactus Bowl, and we continue to work very closely with CFP so that they know us individually. It's the retractable roof covering this venue that makes it the only facility west of Texas to host the Super Bowl, College Football Playoff National Championship game, and the Final Four. But new stadiums under construction in Los Angeles and Las Vegas create serious competition. There's lots of other places with great golf courses and nice hotels and, uh, and nice weather that are going to be competing for these events. While it's no championship contest, the college football playoff semifinals return to Glendale in 2020. In Avondale, Josiah Destin, Cronkite News. ASU's W.P. Carey School of Business found the Super Bowl, Pro Bowl, National Championship game, and Final Four generated more than a billion dollars in economic impact. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, a constitutional expert talks about original intent and the Second Amendment. And hear about a program that provides support to veterans and their families statewide. That's the next Arizona Horizon. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. Our Making the Grade segment looks at the battle over teaching climate change in schools. That's Tuesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from. I'm David Goldstein, owner of Biltmore Loan and Jewelry. We buy your loan on upscale assets. We have over 30 years of experience in determining values of automobiles, jewelry, art, collectibles, and antiques. For more information and appointments, BiltmoreLoan.com. The epic story of two countries, Saudi Arabia and Iran, the Shia feel threatened by and their decades-long battle for control of the Middle East. The Sunni-Shia divide about to explode wide open. Bitter rivals. Part one tonight at eight on Arizona PBS. 
Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Hi, I'm Paula Kerger, president of PBS. The programs you love to watch, like Antiques Roadshow, PBS NewsHour, and one of my favorites, Downton Abbey, are here because people in your community and across the country, like-minded people who love great programs, have made a financial gift. Viewer support, that's you calling or going to our secure website right now, are the single largest source of funding for all the programs you love and can't find anywhere else. Riveting masterpiece dramas, fascinating Ken Burns documentaries, and the best performing arts programs anywhere. Please, take a moment right now and fund your favorites, the programs you love to watch every week. Thanks. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. When you want to be more connected, friend us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, watch us online. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. Think Wednesday on PBS. For stories from the world around us. Stories of survival. We can't sit back and just let these last remaining animals die. The remarkable. Where did people come from? What were their origins? And incredible construction. An effect like this, you cannot see anywhere else. For stories that get you closer to life. Think Wednesday. Wednesday nights, 7.30.